hi guys we're back again i'll just check whether the stream is working then we'll start with the reading mm. ah. it's still checking just a minute wait for it it is working on youtube great Mm-hmm. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. It is working on Twitch as well. Great. Um, just confirming it. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. Yep, it's working great. Let's start with the reading. We are reading Fish's Clinical Psychopathology by Patricia Casey and Brendan Kelly. We are on Chapter 5th, Disorders of Memory. Page number 63 from the book, not from the PDF. Okay. <coughs> Memory is of three types, sensory, short term and long term. It can be compared to a sieve with holes of varying size to assist in separating material that is relevant from that which is irrelevant. The first type of memory, sensory memory, is registered for each of the senses and its purpose is to facilitate the rapid processing of incoming stimuli so that comparisons can be made with material already stored in short and long term memory. Since there are numerous stimuli bombarding the individual, selective attention allows for the sifting of relevant materials from sensory memory for further processing and storage in short-term memory. As a consequence, most sensory memory fades within a few seconds. Short-term memory, also called working memory, allows for the storage of memories for much longer than few seconds available to sensory memory. Short-term memory aids the constant updating of one's surrounding. For example, if you saw a person walking a dog and a few seconds later heard a dog bark, you would not be surprised since you would identify the likely source of the sound from sensory, that is visual memory, that had been processed and encoded in the short-term or working memory. When memories have been rehearsed in short-term memory, they are encoded into long-term memory. Encoding is the process of placing information into what is believed to be a limitless memory reservoir, which can occur for specific stimuli as well as for the general memory. For example, passing a large two-story house, painted yellow with a tennis coat and two sports car in front might be recalled exactly, visual encoding, or recall, recalled in more general terms as the large home of a wealthy owner, semantic encoding. The storage of material in long-term memory allows for recall of events from the past and for the utilization of information learned through the education system. It is resilient to, uh, to attack, unlike short-term memory, which is sensitive to disorders of brain tissue such as Alzheimer's disease. Autobiographical memory is the memories for events and issues that relate to oneself. These may be for specific facts, for example, whether you are married and specific experiences, for example, your wedding day. It is characterized by a general recall of the event, an interpretation of the event and a recall of a few specific details. Flashbulb memory are a specific type of autobiographical memory in which the person becomes aware of an emotionally arousing event, for example, the 9-11 terrorist bombings. Even though they are recalled with seeming accuracy due to rehearsal, their accuracy cannot be assumed. Autobiographical memories in general are not necessarily like video playbacks since they may represent the personal meaning and interpretation that the event had for the person at the expense of ac accuracy. Autobiographical memories are associated with the active experiences of remembering. Most memory tests measure recall of prior events, either from the person's life or from tests that were administered earlier. Common clinical examples of this are five-minute recalls, asking the patient what they had for breakfast or inquiring about details of their past life. In responding to such inquiries, a person is conscious that they are remembering. This is known as explicit declarative or relational memory and is of two types. Episodic, 
memory or specific memory for specific events for example going to the shop this morning and semantic memory or memory for abstract facts such as what is the capital of shad shad is autobiographical memory is one type of episodic memory the performance of tasks such as typing swimming or cutting a loaf of bread are also expressions of prior learning but they differ from episodic memory in that there is no active awareness that memory is being searched in take undertaking the particular skill this type of memory is known as implicit procedural or skill memory studies of people with injury of the to the hippocampus suggest that declarative and procedural memory use different parts of the brain and can function independently the hippocampus is believed to be the site where explicit or declarative memory is stored and implicit procedural memory is thought to reside in the limbic system the amygdala and the cerebellum for example when a person with damage to the hippocampus is repeatedly retained in a task Although there may be a recollection of this there is no concomitant improvement in skills thus they have functioning declarative memory but damaged procedural memory the hippocampus is particularly important in the transfer of memories from short to long term storage the process of remembering has four parts registration retention retrieval and recall for the purpose of discussion we can divide memory impairments into amnesias loss of memory and paramine paramnesias distortion of memory the amnesias amnesia is defined as partial or total inability to recall past experiences and events and its origin may be or orga organic or psychogenic failure to recall may also occur due to normal memory decay so that if an item is not rehearsed the memory fades and therefore cannot be retrieved many people incorrectly assumes that memory is like a signed camera replaying material exactly as recorded and therefore representing a perfect match to events from the past this carries huge implications especially when giving evidence about past events in the courts and is one of the reasons for a statute of limitations applying to some civil and criminal cases A further cause of normal memory failure is interference from related material. In proactive interference, old memories interfere with new learning and hence with recall, while in retroactive inference, new memories interfere with the retrieval of old material. Proactive interference explains why learning Spanish this year will make it difficult to learn German next year. while retroactive interference explains why learning spanish this year makes it difficult to recall the german learned last year psychogenic amnesias dissociative or hysterical amnesia is the sudden amnesia that occurs during periods of extreme trauma and can last for hours or even days the amnesia will be for personal identity such as name address and history as well as for personal events while at the same time the ability to perform complex behavior is maintained there is a discrepancy between the marked memory impairment and the preservation of personality and social skills so that the person behaves appropriately to their background and ed education dissociation may be associated with a few few or wandering state in which the subject travels to another town or country and is often found wandering and lost there are descriptions of dissociative amnesia occurring in those charged with serious offenses although in these circumstances the distinction from malingering is difficult to make dissociative amnesia is believed to be more common in those with a prior history of head injury a recent case series identified four groups varying from fugue states to those with gaps in their memories with each showing different patterns of autobiographical memory loss the more limited amnesia for specific traumatic event is known as catathymic amnesia or motivated forgetting though the terms are often used interchangeably with dissociative amnesia catathymic amnesia is the inability to recall specific painful memories and is believed to occur due to the defense mechanism of repression For definition of repression see appendix 2 however it is unclear whether the repression is driven by a conscious motivation to forget that is suppression or whether it is unconscious that is primary repression catathymic amnesia is more persistent and circumscribed than dissociation in that there is no loss of personal identity in the state the traumatic incident is not available to recall unless some trigger or psychotherapeutic intervention makes the memory available to consciousness a view that is itself controversial this amnesia is believed to last for many years and said to and is said to underpin recovered memory syndrome 
Although this view is challenged by those who dispute its existence, Loftus 1993 preferring to call this false memory syndrome. Distortions of memory or paramnesia. Paramnesia. A detailed review of tra traumatic amnesia is provided by Brewin and Andrews 1998. Organic amnesias. Acute brain disease. In these conditions, memory is poor owing to distortion of perception and attention. Hence, there is a failure to encode material in long-term memory. In acute head injury, there is an amnesia known as retrograde amnesia, which embraces the events just before the injury. This period is usually no longer than a few minutes, but occasionally may be longer, especially in subacute conditions. Anterograde amnesia is amnesia for events occurring after the injury. These occur most commonly following its accidents and are indicative of failure to encode events into long-term memory. Blackouts are circumscribed periods of anterograde amnesia experiencing particularly by those who are alcohol dependent during and following bouts of drinking. They indicate reversible brain damage and vary in length but can span many hours. They also occur in acute confusional states, delirium, due to infections or epilepsy. Subacute coerced brain disease. The characteristic memory disorder is the amnestic state in which the person, the patient is unable to register new memories. This memory disorder is characterized by the inability to learn new information, anterograde amnesia, and the inability to recall previously learned material, retrograde amnesia. However, memories from the remote past remain intact as does recall of learnt, event, learnt material from the past and immediate recall. As improvement occurs, the amnestic period may shrink and recover, re re recovery may sometimes be total. This diagnosis is not made when there are other signs of cognitive impairments as in dementia or when consciousness is clouded as in delirium. Korsakoff syndrome is the amnestic syndrome caused by thiamine deficiency, but other causes include cerebrovascular disease, multiple sclerosis, transient global amnesia, head injury, and electroconvulsive treatment. Chronic coerced brain disease. This was subacute. Chronic coerced brain, brain disease, patient with amnesia or those with Korsakoff syndrome usually have a loss of memory extending back into the recent past for a year or so. Patients with a progressive chronic brain disease have an amnesia extending over many years, though the memory of recent event is lost before that for remote event. Before that for remote events. This was pointed out by Ribot and is known as the Ribot slow of memory regression. Ribot's law says that the oldest memory goes the later, like the newest memory goes fastest and oldest memory goes slowest. Other amnesias, anxiety amnesia occurs when there is anxious preoccupation or poor concentration in disorder such as depressive illness or generalized anxiety. Initially, it may wrongly suggest dissociative amnesia. More severe forms of amnesia in depressive disorders resemble dementia and are known as depressive pseudodementia. Amnesias in anxiety and depressive disorders are generally caused by impaired concentration and resolve once the underlying disorder is treated. Disorders of memory or paramnesia. This is the falsification of memory by distortion and can be conveniently divided into distortion of recall and distortions of recognition. This can occur in normal subjects due to the process of normal forgetting or due to proactive and retroactive interference from newly acquired material. It can occur with those in those with emotional problems as well as in organic state. Disorders, distortions of recall. Retrospective falsification. Retrospective falsification refers to the unintentional distortion of memory that occurs when it is filtered through a person's current emotional, experiment, experiential and cognitive states. It is often found in those with depressive illness who describe all past experiences in negative terms due to the impact of their current mood, 
so a depressed person with hi- will highlight their failures while ignoring and or forgetting about their success this may give the impression that the person has always been incompetent and unstable indeed any psychiatric illness can lead to retrospective falsification even following recovery the falsification may continue as for example when a person following discharge from hospital exaggerates the restrictions that were placed upon them while forgetting the memory of such measures this is invariably related to the inside of the patient as well as to suggestibility those with hysterical personality in whom suggestibility is high can therefore produce a complete set of distorted memories of the past false memory false memory is the recollection of an event or events that did not occur but which the individual subsequently strongly believes did take place the syndrome refers not to distortion of true memories as in normal forgetting but to the actual construction of memory around events that never took place although this definition was developed specifically in the context of childhood abuse recalled by the victims in adulthood it can also be applied in rare situations such as false confessions to serious crimes The origin of this latter false memory is this term memory distrust syndrome and emanates from the person's own fundamental distrust of their memory termed source amnesia. This source amnesia arises because of difficulty remembering the source from which the information was acquired whether from one's own recall or from some external source as recounted by others. In view of the fallibility of memory this phenomena should hardly be surprising for example healthy people have trouble remembering the source of much information including when where from whom or in what modality spoken or written this difficulty worsens with increasing age and is an even greater problem in the presence of organic brain disease those who are suggestible are also at great risk of false memory in these instances it is important to identify an actual memory since it is possible to have false belief without any memory as for example in a person who says they were in hospital following a following a cerebrovascular accident when in fact they had no recollection of this but had been told by their family that it happened screen memory screen memory is a recollection that is partially true and partially false it is thought that the individual only recalls part of the true memory because the entirety of the true memory is too painful to recall For example an individual may recall that childhood sexual abuse were perpetuated by a neighbor because it is too painful to recall that the abuse was in fact perpetuated by their own brother in any given case it is difficult to dissect out precisely which element of such memories are objectively true this may be important in both the therapeutic and legal settings the relationship between screen memory psychological symptoms and other psychic phenomena such as dreams may be difficult to establish but untangling these relationships may be seen as an opportunity for psychological or psychoanalytical explorations in certain cases confabulation confabulation is the falsification of memory occurring in clear consciousness in association with organic pathology it manifests itself as the filling in of gaps in memory by imagined or untrue experiences that have no basis in fact Some of these statements may be contradictory yet no attempt is made to con- correct them that the confabulation diminishes as the impairment worsens two broad patterns emerge the embarrassed type in which the patient tries to fill in gaps in memory as a result of an awareness of a deficit and the fantastic type in which the look l- lacunae are filled in by details exceeding the need of the memory impairments such as descriptions of wild adventures Overall the embarrassed type is much more common and it may represent real memories displaced in time Some schizophrenics confabulate and provide detailed descriptions of fantastic events that have never happened Some researchers argue that confabulation is a misnomer since these memories are fixed and unchanging the term pictorial thinking is used instead by some while others call them memory hallucination a term rejected by fish as not very suitable they may be best termed retrospective delusion c section retrospective delusions lithologia the temporary inability to remember names or proper nouns is common and generally not indicative of any pathology pseudo fantastica Pseudo-fantastica or fluent possible lying 
pathological lying is the term used by convention to describe the confabulation that occurs in those without organic brain pathology such as personality disorder of antisocial or hysterical type Typically the subject describes various major events and traumas or make grandiose claims and these often present at a time of personal crisis such as facial legal proceedings proceedings facing legal proceedings although it seems that the person with pseudologia believes their own stories and there is a blurring of boundary between fantasy and reality when confronted with incontrovertible incontro- evidence these individuals will admit their lying minor vari- varieties of these Minor varieties of this occur in those who falsify or exaggerate the past in order to impress others. An MRI study of a group of persistent liars who did not have personality disorders or any other psychiatric disorders were found to have over 20% more neural fibers in their prefrontal cortex, pointing to its role in their behavior. Although it is possible that this was a consequence of repeated lying in addition to the prefrontal cortex, APE 2011 has shown that Those who lie displayed greater activation in the nucleus accumbens, a structure that plays a part in the reward system of the brain. The amygdala, which processes inform emotion, also plays a part. These recent developments may play a role when lie detection becomes a necessity, as in police investigation or in the courtroom. Munchaus Munchausen syndrome. Munchausen syndrome. is a variant of pathological lying in which the individual presents to hospital with bogus illness complex medical histories and often multiple surgical scars a proxy form of this condition has been described in which the individual usually a parent produces a factitious illness in someone else generally their child this may lead to repeated presentations to hospital over a prolonged period of time and both diagnosis and management can be very challenging in these cases the diagnosis of munchausen's by proxy is itself a controversial diagnosis the role of suggestibility is important in those who present with confabulation pseudologia retrospective falsification or false memory suggestible subjects accept statements from others act upon their command and deny evidence from the senses or from rational understanding that would contradict these statements Suggestibility is based either on gullibility or on implicit trust such as that between doctor and a patient. It is prominent in those who have asthenic or hysterical personality disorders. Vorbereden or approximate answers. Vorbereden or approximate answer is seen in those with hysterical pseudodementia named after Ganser who is who in 1989 who in 1989 described four criminals showing several common features these included clouding of consciousness with disorientation auditory and visual hallucination or pseudo hallucinations amnesia for the period during which the symptoms were manifest conversion symptoms and recent head injury infection and severe emotional stress Approximate answers suggest that the patient understands the question but appears to be deliberately avoiding the correct answer. So, when asked what the capital of England is, the reply might be Bristol. Or when asked how many I a dog has, the answer given is three. Cancer believed it to be a hysterical condition with the unconscious production of symptoms to avoid a court appearance. Some authorities reserve the term Ganser syndrome for those who have clouding of consciousness along with the other symptoms and distinguish it from pseudodementia in which consciousness is clear. Many now believe that the Ganser syndrome, Ganser syndrome is indicative of either an organic or a psychotic state rather than hysteria as originally believed. A similar condition of approximate answer is found in those consciously feigning illness and this should be a called called malingering or factitious disorder according to the nature of the game ganser syndrome and malingering or factitious disorder are often confused in spite of the conscious basis for the latter wobi wobi redden is also found in acute schizophrenia usually the hebephrenic type cryptomnesia Cryptomnesia is described by Sims 1997 as the experience of not remembering that one is remembering. For example, a person writes a witty passage and does not realize that they are quoting from some passage they have seen somewhere else. 
rather than writing something original there is no indication as to whether this is common phenomena or whether it is associated with any psych- specific psychiatric disorder retrospective delusions Retrospective delusions are found in some patients with psychosis who backdate their delusions in spite of the clear evidence that the illness is of recent origin. Thus the person will say that they have always been persecuted or that they have always been evil. Primary delusions experienced may take the form of memories and that are these are known as delusional memories consisting of sudden delusional ideas and su- delusional perceptions. Delusional memories are variously devi- defined some authorities believing them to be delusional interpretations of real memories while others such as the present state examination suggest that they are experiences of past events that did not occur but which the subject clearly remembers there are two opponents to a delusional memory that is the perception either real or imagined and the memory disorders of recognition Deja vu is strictly a disturbance of memory but a problem with the familiarity of places and event is not a strictly disturbance is not strictly a disturbance of memory but a problem with the familiarity of places and events it comprises the feeling of having experienced a current event in the past although it has no basis in fact the converse surmise vu is the knowledge that an event has been experienced before but is not presently associated with the appropriate feeling of familiarity deja and tendu the feeling of auditory recognition and deja pense a new thought recognized as having previously occurred are related to deja vu being different only in the modality of experience these can be experienced by normal subjects as well as among those with the temporal lobe epilepsy While imag- imaging techniques are being used to examine these phenomena nothing definitive has yet emerged false reconnaissance is defined as false recognition or misidentification and it can occur in organic psychosis and in acute and chronic schizophrenia it may be possi- positive when the patient recognizes stranger as their friends and relatives in confusional states and acute schizophrenia at most a few people are positively misidentified However some chronic schizophrenics give a false identity to every person they meet in negative misidentification the patient insists that friends and relatives are not whom they say they are and that they are strangers in disguise some patient assert that some or all people are doubles of the real person people whom they claim to be this is known as capgras syndrome and occurs in schizophrenia and in dementia hyperamnesia The opposite of amnesia and paramnesia are, can also occur it is termed hyperamnesia or exaggerated registration retention and recall flash bulb memories are those memories that are associated with intense emotion they are unusually vivid detailed and long lasting for example many people can recall where and what they were doing when they heard the news of the death of Dia- Dia- diana princess of wales despite the belief that these are highly accurate A 10-year follow-up of the memories of the 9/11 Ill- attack found that two-third were accurate, and the greatest loss occurred in the first year. Flashbacks are sudden intrusive memories that are associated with the cognitive and emotional experience of a traumatic event, such as an incident. Accident. It may lead to acting and or feeling that the event is recurring, and attempts have been made to use this as defense in some murder trial. It is regarded as one of the characteristic symptoms of post traumatic stress disorder but is also associated with substance misuse disorder and emotional events. It is also likely to be the term that is used inaccurately and should not be confused with intrusive recollection which lack the emotional familiarity of flashbacks. Flashbacks involving hallucin- hallucinogenic experiences can occur in association with hallucinogenic drugs and possibly cannabis use after the short term effects have worn off these incorporate visual distortions but per- false perception of movement in peripheral fields f- flashes of colors trails of images from moving objects after images and halos as well as classical hallucinations eidetic images represent visual memories of almost hallucinatory vividness that are found in disorders due to substance misuse especially hallucinogenic agents great next is disorders of emotion interesting we'll read this tomorrow let's end it i know it was short but it was also very much too much to gather 
I have read this, but then if you are reading it for the first time, it would be too much. And you can also research on single, single words that you might not know. Yeah, and read more and elaborate more elaborately on each ones like the flashback, flashbulb memories, the experiment on that, then pseudo fantastica, which all disorders show them. Then lithologia. There are all these terms which come up in all the chapter. These are technical terms we use instead of using the whole explanation, which is precise. But yeah, you can read them to gather more information. So in that terms, it was heavy. So we will go as we had decided earlier, chapter wise only. And next is disorders of emotion, which we will read tomorrow you can check out the youtube channel where all the recordings all the previous recordings are also there there won't be any lag in the recordings because these are recordings and not stream if there was any lag at all in between this will compensate if there is any suggestion recommendations any feedback you can reach out to me on youtube do check it out Thank you for the subscribes and the likes and sharing if you are sharing it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. We'll meet tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye stopping the stream.